Oh, oh my god, I hit, I hit the wrong button. Oh my god, I hit the stop button by mistake, or I hit something. Hey everybody, welcome to Cocktail Time, live, episode 14 or or something like that. It's 15. <laughs> 15. Uh, 15. 15? Yes. And we're, doing this, we're doing this early today because uh, I actually have tickets to go to uh, a movie thing tonight, so, you know. Yeah, we're, the, the best we're, movie of all time, possibly. The best movie of all time. I'm going to go see a movie called uh, Iron Sky. Uh, which is about uh, Nazis oh. that were living on the moon. Yeah, the space yeah, Nazis film. It's about I... space Nazis, which should be fantastic. Have so. you seen the trailer? It's fucking awesome. It looks really cool. The trailer's really good. Yeah. Who who knows what's gonna happen? If it's gonna be good or not? It hasn't gotten a a public release yet. Uh, but it's it's, uh, it's, it's I'm going to the Seattle International Film Festival uh, tonight. I think that's mm. what it is. Uh, so yeah, it should be good. We'll see. It's space Nazis. How can you go wrong with space Nazis? It's really hard to go wrong with space Nazis. I, I, I don't want to say on, a, on live on the air recorded that I, I, love, I love Nazis, but I do like Nazi movies, like World War II and, and Nazi movies. They're very compelling. They make a very good villain. Well, they look so damn good doing yeah. their horrible, horrible earth-crushing deeds, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you guys I've know, heard we, they, they're actually going to develop both a prequel and a sequel to it as well. Really? Is it, is it doing that well? I mean, uh, the thing is, it's like, I, I don't know. It hasn't even gotten a full re- release yet. How could you, uh, you know, divulge I, the money? I don't know, but... It does seem kind of weird. It could be that there's just some, some backers that, were, that saw the movie... Um, beforehand and we're just like oh god this is so great we need to it's going to do well we need to back it and put you know get the uh our capital in there so we can uh invest in the the new films coming out before anybody else picks it up mm-hmm. yeah blind spot plans prequel and sequel to iron sky oh wow see that makes me happy i haven't even seen the first one yet and i'm already excited about the prequel and sequel so wait, wait a second what's a prequel to iron sky that would just be world war Two. <laughs> that would be. Wouldn't that be just be the fall of Berlin, the book? The, it would be the the rise to the moon. The rise to the, 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 the Nazi moon. space program. And you, yeah, all of that stuff. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, hi everybody. Uh, we haven't even done introductions. You know who we are. Uh, <laughs> we got Bob Webb on my uh, lower right and Chris Davis on the lower left. Have you? How are you guys doing? Doing all right. Good. And a good week. We're using. I'm using a new. Uh, set up tonight and i was hoping i was running around on seattle trying to get uh cables and and adapters and trying to improve cocktail time as much as possible i'm using my old my old vocal mic i used to use for my punk show for my, for my punk band and stuff and i have a, a mm. mackie 1402 mixer so i'm trying to upgrade things i didn't get it exactly how i wanted to get it for this show uh, so i can actually run sound clips that everyone could hear but i'm having uh, difficulties audio stuff is awful i love it but it's just it's 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 brain meltingly difficult sometimes to wrap your head around this stuff. So I'm gonna have like two sound cards I'm dealing with, and it's just a pain in the butt. But this will work for tonight, right? Yeah, I guess uh, yeah. Chat can barely hear us, but uh, you're really loud. But the rest of us are kind of quiet. So I'm gonna lower my mic a little bit, and so <laughs> that will probably improve things for them. Yeah, so I'm, I'm lowering my mic in XSplit, and then you guys can. Uh, so when they turn up, it'll be sort of uh, sort of equal. Awesome. Because I'm using like a professional condenser mic now. So now it's like you could probably hear like things. You know, you usually hear hear the sirens in, in the city. Here you, you could probably be able to hear the crimes now as they're being committed. <laughs> <laughs> in, in well, I did hear someone uh, clinking on a plate. I don't know if that was uh, someone in your kitchen. Or yeah, if that was Chris. That might have been me. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, Maybe it's oh. Chris. I don't know. It, but yeah, we'll work on that. When I get uh, yeah, Phantom Power as Adams Adam at J- 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 Oh, it's at J- 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 in chat at 4pp.tv. Yeah, <laughs> I love his name because I can never pronounce it, so I just call him at So let's move on to let's do uh let's do our toast of the week, shall we? And see, if I had this set up right, I would be playing Toast of the Week music as we start up and make it all professional. But that I digress. Maybe next yeah. week. Yeah. So, oh, well. Why don't you go first, Chris? 
Uh, toast, toast. Uh, I'm going to be a broken record and toast Bioware mm-hmm. uh, for the Mass Effect uh, Leviathan DLC coming out next we, week. We need to get you away from Mass Effect uh, <laughs> 3 in multiplayer. You have... I'm, I'm, it's addicting. You a, I'm you sorry. Have a problem, Chris. And this is actually not really a cocktail time. This is an intervention. We care about you, and we love you, and we don't like to see what's happening to you. You should not. Yeah. You should not be. Well, that this. hasn't been all I've been playing this week, but we'll get to that, right? Wait, wait. So I thought I saw your status online, and it said you were playing offline. Were you playing Mass Effect three multiplayer offline? Can you do no, that? No, I was playing it online. Okay. I don't know what it was saying. It was saying that I might have just been really just out of it because I played a fucking acid trip game about three hours ago. Well, we'll get to that. I'm yeah. sure. But yeah, Mass Effect's sure. just been my go-to multiplayer game for Ever? since March, and that's gonna change that's in fine. a few weeks. So, and I, and I totally respect that because we all have our go-to multiplayer games. Mine for a very long time was Battlefield Three. I was actually thinking about this. Earlier today, I haven't played Battlefield 3 in maybe a month, a month and a half. I probably suck so bad now. I don't even want to go back. I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be embarrassed because I was doing very well because I was playing all the fucking time. And now I just, I think I just go and, and people are just like, you know, fucking noob. Just get out. Get out. Just get out. Well, get out. Well, I, I just got a brand new monitor and it's actually a, it's a 1080p monitor. So I can actually play games full high def now. So I'm going to. I need uh, to play Battlefield soon, so. I thought you had um. I thought you had a. Oh, you mean uh, you mean for the feed? Uh, well, no, for just you know playing PC games. Oh, for PC games. Oh, okay. Yes, that's been my issue. I've I've I had old I had an old 1680 by 1050, yeah, and CRT. started flickering, and it just I gave up on it. So. <laughs> it's a CRT. You have an old CRT. No, no, it's it's an LCD, <laughs> but uh, and at could... this point, I wish I had my old uh, CRT. I'm still I'm loud. loud. All right, I'm turning down a little more for people. But right, now it's fucking pretty far down. So we'll see. Uh, but my, I, I, go ahead. Uh, my drink this evening is some high fine alcohol. It is uh, a brew mm. that I came across at Walgreens. They were selling six packs of Big Flats. Oh gosh. <laughs> Big, what is that? I've seen this before. <laughs> it's a lager beer. It says genuine brew brewed from only the choicest hops. Choicest? 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 That's, That's not word. even a word. Can someone C-H-O-I-C-E-S-T. look it up? I C E S T. We need choicest. to see if, if if choicest is an actual word. They, they were selling it for three dollars a six pack. There is a there is a four $3. player pot. <laughs> a six pack. Yeah. That's like yep. that's less than PBR. I have 50 cent, cam? 50 cent beer. Wow. And I'm going to be drinking that this evening. All right. Well, yeah, do, you. do you not remember the old uh, four-player podcast episode called The Big Flat Show? No. no. Really? Oh, yeah, man. Um, it's an obscure one, but it's it's where they actually bought a... Uh, I think it was, must, must have been Carlos, so someone had brought in a, a sixer of uh, Big Flats. And let me just remind you, Bob, that every four-player show is obscure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, or do you mean the 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 internationally popular four player episode that, that exactly Let me really see, made uh, the charts? <laughs> I want to see what episode it was. It's the yeah, episode the that show. most people haven't heard. Two forty two. Episode okay. two forty two. Apparently, that was uh, actually, uh, wow, that was almost a year ago. Oh, I mean, it was in October. Suzakix from uh, in, in chat of four pp TV has said that choicest is actually a word. Apparently, it is a word. Who the fuck oh, is? choicest, but not choiciest. There's a difference. Apparently. Yeah, choices. Well, did I mispronounce it? I apologize. Oh, so it's choicest. But at the bo- very bottom, it says, "It's the water that makes it." <laughs> so, that's, that's what it says. Well, beer is about like ninety percent like, water. What else would make it? Wait, maybe they mean like maybe the, the, it's like a mystical process, and there's water golems that that create the beer from their effervescence. You know, I, I don't water, know. water dwarves in the well, in caves underneath the sea, crafting the beer through their they they siphon the water through their beards and then it comes out as that be, as that beer. Well, it's 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 the one ingredient that uh, you use a lot of. Like in five gallons of beer, you use five gallons of water. Right. But it's also one of the cheapest ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> so you can improve that one a lot. 
and then just <laughs> cut out everything. I just get the shit hops and get the shit malts and just it. it it's just water, mostly water. You know, that's that's where you got to focus on. Right. Oh, here we go. This is probably why. Okay. Speak what? now, guys. What? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I had you guys kind of down on my my thing here. Ah. Ah. Is that too loud? For you? You can't hear anything. No, right? we can't hear anything. No. That's fine. No. That's fine. Okay. That might be better for people at home then. So I, I have like multiple, <sighs> multiple things I'm messing with here. So bear, bear with us. All right. So, so, so Mass Effect. Yes. All right. I'm not surprised. Bob. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, shit, I'm trying to remember what I've been playing. Um, uh, well, let me do my shot first. Actually, you know what? This it's the same thing. All right, we'll go with that. So my shot is something called uh, Black Death. So because that's encouraging. Yeah, yeah. So it's um 151 and Jaeger. Oh. Oh God. Yeah. It's it's not a. It's not pleasant. I think I've had this once before. Oh. That sounds but, familiar. Yeah, I know. I think this was one that Tara had made me during one of the shows randomly. But I'm just going to do equal parts each. Oh, God. Does Tara was, not we, No, we didn't you? have 151 at the time. I think she just used vodka. So I've never actually had a genuine one of these. Yeah, she's... It's a... Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> she loves and hates me. <laughs> she, well, she loves to watch me suffer. That's true. Yeah. Well, she she sees you as one of her as one of her uh, experiments. Uh, experiments, <laughs> like one of her one of her animals that she's, you know, she probably has a whole book a whole book devoted to taking notes on on you. Well, she is part German. <laughs> so this explains iron, she iron, could be a, a iron, space Nazi. A space Nazi. Tara is a yeah. space Nazi. Yeah. So this is oh god. This is as you can see, this is the Black Death. Oh, okay. It's pretty dark. And this shot goes to... Um, I might be stealing your, your shot, but... Uh, or your toast. The uh, Darksiders 2. Yeah. And yeah. I'll go... So I'll go too. Yeah, to, to Vigil for Darksiders 2. Because... Yeah. Have you have you played since we spoke? Yeah, I actually played a All bit right. today. We'll, we'll talk about that then. So... Excellent. So let's do this. Oh, God. One. Two. Open it up, Chris. There you are. Yeah. Three. <laughs> All right. How how was that? Oh. How was that? That that dwarven, water dwarven made beer. <laughs> I don't think the quality matches the price. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> you think it got ripped off, Chris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, this tastes terrible. Oh. I'll just just go with it. Oh, that's gonna suck. Remember, remember, Chris, it's the water that makes it. Check, check, check. Yeah, I. I... It is the water that makes it. Oh yeah, I didn't actually say what I was. I was drinking this glass. Um, this. This is the infamous golden blonde beer that decided it wanted to visit all over my living room floor. Oh, so this, that's is the, uh, this is the homebrew that I uh, I made a while back. Does it taste like living room floor? I don't think he I don't think he like sopped it up. I think he just, you know. Ah, shag. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I yeah, I there was still beer in the the fermenter. So right. it's, yeah, this was the stuff that wasn't on the floor. I I didn't drink the stuff that was on the floor. Well, that's good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So so Chris, Chris why, don't, why don't you go first? Because I want to no. I want to hear. Oh, it's, what, what games you played? Uh, and, well, Mass Effect, obviously. Right. Uh, but I also put a lot of time into Metal Gear Solid Four, uh, getting to the fourth act, which I broadcast last night on the on the feed. Right. And uh, the rest of my time, I've been spending with uh, Sleeping Dogs. I actually beat it uh, Thursday night. Uh huh. Yeah. What was your What was your final uh, view on that? You know the the combat and and the missions were satisfying, mm-hmm. but the cutscenes and everything that else was going that was going on just really wasn't. Really? 
Hmm. It. I, I just. I wasn't happy with the final product at all. Really? Because I really liked. I liked the cutscenes a lot. Well, they they look good up until like the last quarter of the game, and yeah. then they stay the same. They don't build tension or or at least add to the moment. This, I think it's the story. Just, yeah, it, it's, it fizzles a little bit. It fizzles a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. sure, you, you, you get to do what you've been wanting to do the entire game, but it just it it plays and that's it game over. Right, right. And I, I want I want something more. I want to know about what's gonna happen <clears> to the triad and you know, where's Way gonna go from here? But there's nothing for the player then. There's nothing it's after over. DLC. Right. And yeah, yeah. They, 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 they announced something like six months worth of DLC. Oh god. For this thing. Yeah. It's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that's a very bad business plan. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I think the experience up to that point was, was pretty fantastic. Oh, it's 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 a it's a very fun game. It's a good game. I'm gonna start writing my review probably tomorrow. Excellent. But it's just the final product, the very end of it, it just kinda sucks. That's unfortunate. Well yeah. I think sucks is maybe a strong word, but I know where you're coming from. And and, and it is sad when projects do have a, a certain amount of, of propensity to, to sort of fizzle out toward the end. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is sort of a prime example of that, I thought. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of just kind of fizzled out at the end. It, it seems like they ran out of money. <laughs> They're running out of time, too. It's always the... Right, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, you have to cut bits of the, the products as, as you're getting closer to the deadline. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. anything else besides that? Other than that, uh, just those three games, really. I, said, I've had I've had Dark Siders two sitting on my coffee table for like a week. Un- I haven't even unwrapped it, uh, but I guess it's gonna have to wait until next week. Unfortunately. Why is that? Well, we got packs this oh, week, yeah. and oh yeah, that's right. I've got a few of the things to work on that won't let me actually play much oh, games. Oh, packs! So. Push up, packs. <laughs> Who cares about packs? <laughs> it's a little important, you know. A don't you bit, think? A little bit of a big thing. A little bit. Right. But you said you said three. You said I think you said three games, but I think you just mentioned two. Mass Effect, Sleeping Dogs, and Metal Gear Solid Four. Mm-hmm. Oh, Metal Gear Solid Four. Have you never played Metal Gear Solid Four, or is it just? Uh... Well, I've beaten it like four times, but okay. I hadn't played since the new trophy patch came out. Oh. And right. there were things I didn't do in my previous runs that I wanted to do this time around. Right, right. So I actually did a. I'm doing a no kill and no alert phase run. Oh Jesus! Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten through Act Four, so it's yeah. working. I tried to do that with uh, 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 Deus Ex: Human Re- Revolution, not not the main <laughs> game, but the, the DLC, and mm-hmm. they had this sort of no alarm, uh, and then you can't all you also can't use any of your um your upgrades as well, um, and I've got oh. about three. Three quarters of the way through it, I was like, "Oh, fuck this!" <laughs> just, I mean, it's it's challenging, but I think I, I don't know. I need to go back and keep on trying. But it just it wasn't as much fun because I had fun in that game using my multiple abilities. Not being able to use any of them, I think, kind of sucked out some of the soul of that game for me. Yeah, I think I used. Uh, I was doing the no kills uh, play on the original on the, through the um, my first playthrough through the campaign, except I fucked it up and I killed one guy once accidentally. And you're screwed after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, like, nothing you can do. Yeah. Like, you just have to... Well, I mean, uh, it has a good save system, so you can always just go back and... and well, I, I could have... I was on PC. I could have gone back, but I was just like, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. How's, a uh, Real quick, how, hey, Chad, how's uh, Bob and Chris? Are they louder now? I adjusted a couple of things. They still look like they're coming in not as loud on XSplit, but they're turned up here, so I don't know. I don't know. I got a, I got a little little treat for chat. Let me just. I could get you into the back end of oh, X with yeah. the next one. Let's see. So, what is this chat? Do you see that? <laughs> that's, that's that special. is that is so the that's... new live page. I'm actually watching it in live in wide screen mode. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty go back, cool. Go, go back and forth between live screen and normal. All right, let me uh let me try to do normal view. There's normal view for you. There's here. And then if you want to sit back on your couch, then we have a wide screen. Yeah, and then, uh, oh, what's this? The, the Too bright out. for you? Too bright for you? Oh, fuck, <laughs> lights out, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> and that's no. all saved uh, via cookies, so whenever you go back to it, it's... It remembers, it's your, yep. it remembers your stuff. 
He so. remembers your preferences. Remembers your preferences. You see, you're that good, Bob. Yes. You're that good. I better be. I've been fucking doing this for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that's so, all right. So let's let's uh let's talk about um. Yeah, I know Bob and Chris are low. I don't I don't know what it is. I have to get into the back end of, of X Split and, and work on stuff. This is maybe maybe setting this stuff. You know. 20 minutes, setting it up 20 minutes before going on wasn't the best idea, but you know, we'll work with it. it. It'll sound great on YouTube when it hits the hits YouTube, so, <laughs> in, in a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're a little behind from working on the new side. So. But uh, yes. let's talk about Darksiders, because that's kind of the big the big game that's that, that's out right now. And I've played about eight hours of it so far in a couple of days. Uh, how much have you played, Bob? An hour. An hour of it. Yeah. I've been I've been fucking busy this entire weekend. I've been really uh because uh, last week I just worked on the working on the site and was catching up with work work because that was my first week back from work uh, or back to work. Um, this weekend I've just been catching up a lot of uh, errands and chores and bullshit. I did broadcast a little bit yesterday. Mm-hmm. Well, I broadcast today. Did we broadcast on? Oh, we broadcast on Thursday. Thursday mm-hmm. night was when I broadcasted. Um, but yeah, I've just been so busy that uh, I really haven't had too much time to dedicate to like any yeah. kind of big games, especially like Darksiders. I didn't want to get into Darksiders <laughs> 2 because it takes so much time. It's one well, of those Dark- games that's yeah, it's going to be more than like a 20-hour experience. It's it's like a 30, 30-something hour experience. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's certainly not... I'll tell you one thing. It's certainly not a time sink. It's, it's really... It's really pretty fantastic. I mean, it's. I think I, I described it as um, uh, Todd McFarlane does Zelda. You know. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has you know it has that uh, has that those qualities of adventure has great dungeons has a really good uh, loot and RPG system. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like, you know, if World of Warcraft was was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> if it actually had a good story. If it had a good story. Well, it's the problem with World of Warcraft. There's a lot of story there, but it's just not told well. Well, no, it's, it's just it's just like blocks and blocks of text. Yeah, that's well, that's that's how it was told in the first one, and they got better at it by telling by having a uh, cutscenes and whatnot later on. But still, it was, it's, yeah, wasn't as good as it could have been. No, no, and and and, and, and no one reads that stuff. And and they and yeah. the thing is, they make the quest structure in such a way through the menu system, and we're getting off. Point, I guess. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, but they make the quest system and the menu system, the quest structure, up in such, put together in such a way that it's very easy just to pass up this stuff. You just keep on hitting a button and you fly right through the menus and you you turn in your quest. Oh well, yeah, and it's also know? like with the uh, the pickup group system. Like if you go into a random dungeon with a random group, people want to get through there as fast as fucking possible because they've done it like twenty or thirty or fucking four hundred times before. Right. And it's, even though it's your first time, you're gonna get rushed the fuck through. Yeah. So you're yeah. not going to see all the content and like see all the get you know, get all the dialogues and all that stuff because people want to get through it and get done real quickly. But oh, yeah, people, us, yeah. people don't want to bother because they nah. just want to get to that high level and then just the rating thing, you know. But anyway, Dark, Dark Souls too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's I, I I got completely sucked into it. I'm I'm completely kind of addicted to it now. Um, I don't know. Like how how, do you, like, how far have you gotten? What have you done so far? Um, I've gotten to the. Uh, I've gotten past the intro sequence. I am now going towards the uh, cauldron. That's the word for it. It is called a cauldron. Yes. The right. uh, the first part of the forge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That's that's basically it's. You can probably get there in about like uh, forty five minutes to an hour. It's not that yeah. long. And and really, you can be in this game with like I think it was hour three, and it was still kind of showing me how to do stuff because there was. There was a lot of things I was I was looking at on my menu system and on my HUD that weren't explained. I was getting pissed off. I'm like, well, what does this stuff do? And there's no manual. The manual is just mm-hmm. this little leaflet that just kind of shows the, the the controls, and that's about it. And I was getting very frustrated that they, these things weren't being explained. And, and it was like hour two, maybe two and a half hour, two and a half hours, and they were, they finally got to kind of explaining the rest of like what I was looking at. So like like the wrath system or yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, but no, it's great. The world is beautiful. I love. I mean, I make fun of it because it looks like kind of has a has a World of Warcraft kind of look to it. But it's it's really beautiful and it's 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 the visuals are pretty great. It's a little like I heard it looks a lot better on the PC. 
It, you know, I've been I've been playing it on the PC and it oh, looks okay. it looks fucking good. It's a 1080, so it's a 1080 like uh, everything's boost all the way fuck up and it's really smooth. Yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna have to try to broadcast it at some point so we can actually have some comparison between the PC and the uh, 360. You should. I, th- I know Brad's been uh, Brad's been broadcasting it, but I'm not sure if he's been broadcasting the uh, the PC version or the console version. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Is he doing? I think he rented it. He rented it. Oh, so he, he must be doing 360. And he's on the console version. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it, it's 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 great. I mean, it's got that underwater the underwater swimming thing that you know Brad loves, but it's yeah. it's, it's implemented really well. I'm finally getting a, a handle on the fucking wall run controls because I I'm always I had a hard time with it at the beginning. I'm still having a hard time with it. Yeah, you'll get used to it. I'm at the point now where I'm I'm, I'm actually good at it, but it's like it's taken me a good four or five hours to really get it down. For some reason, I'm maybe I'm just a fucking retard, but I, I had a problem getting it down. You so you have to you run toward the edge. You you right or you left stick toward the wall and you hit a and that's how you do your wall run yeah but i'm at the point in the game where you can wall run between walls and around corners so you have to wall run yeah so you have to wall run and then when you get to a certain point you have to hit a again like tap a again and you'll jump from one wall to the other yeah and then you have to hit a again and then you'll keep on going and then you can kind of do a thing where you go back and forth between walls and in a in a narrow hallway almost like a ninja gaiden like yeah wall no, jump you back can do forth. that to the that's the the intro sequence gives you how to do that Back and forth between the yeah. walls, or just yeah, like, as like you're... a ninja guy. Like, bang, 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 bang. No, no, but this is as you're wall running with your scraping your claws on the edge of the wall. Yeah, you don't do that in the intro sequence. Yeah, you do that later. You have to learn how to do mm. that, and that's how you get to some areas. So, so when do you get the hook shot? I don't know. I haven't gotten the hook shot yet. <laughs> I found. I already found a place where I could use the hook shot. So did I. Yeah. Well, that's one thing that's really cool is you're going through this world and you see these these chests and whatnot are kind of yeah. out, you know, and you're like, shit, I can't, I can't get to that. And you'll try. I was like swimming around, I was like trying to jump the walls, like what the fuck, I can't get up there. And I look up there, I was like, that looks like I can use a hook shot on that. Son yeah, bitch. I haven't got. I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, about eight hours in, and already, you know, in my uh, accessories menu, you know, I have like two out of five and like one out of four. So there, there's still a whole bunch of stuff I'm gonna get. So I mean, I got, I got a gun. Wait. Two, two out of five, that's the ability. That's your your crow mm-hmm. and your horse, right? Correct. Right. What does the crow do for you? Because like, I noticed the crow kind of acts like Navi a little bit. Like the crow sometimes will go over and hover by chests. Uh, the crow just shows you areas of interest. Ah. It's almost like it's like your waypointing system. Right. So if you, if you press down the left trigger, uh, I'm sorry, left stick, he'll, uh, he'll fly, kind of give you hints of where you need to go. Mm. So it's best to kind of ignore the bird. As much as possible. Sometimes he's helpful, but I kind of don't want to... I wish he wasn't there all the time, because I, I just want to be able to figure it out without that sort of like like nudging feeling that, you know, ah, over here, me, you know? <laughs> I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want that all the time as a reminder. Luckily, he's not, he's not very apparent to where you can't, like, you can easily not pay attention to him if you don't want it to. It reminds me of, like, one of the, uh, the greatest... I shouldn't say the greatest, but one one of uh, one of uh, the best moments from the movie Willow. Remember the movie? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Where of course. the uh, it's the very beginning where the they're setting out on an adventure, and the old uh you know wizened uh, village chieftain uh turns a stone into a bird, and the bird flies away, and they're like it's flying back towards the village, and he goes ignore the bird, follow the river. Do you remember that part at all? I don't remember that. Part. What? <laughs> when was the last time you saw Willow? I last time I saw Willow was like, oh my god, why are we talking about Willow? Uh, half past uh, never actually. You've last never time? seen Willow? Never you seen should, Willow. You should see. Oh Willow. come on, you gotta see Willow. You should see Willow. At least once, see Willow. It's like it's yeah. like it's basically a poor man's Hobbit. Yeah. I you guess know? I guess there's there's little people in it. There's dwarves. Well, if, if there's dwarves in it, it's automatically. Are there? Uh, do- you know, oh yeah. Like, I, I I immediately thought of like the Tolkien dwarves, not the not the real dwarves. Oh yeah, it's like like Time Bandits is kind of like the Hobbit for people on acid. Yeah, Time Bandits, Bandits is really. Don't tell me you haven't seen Time Bandits, Chris. Chris, why do you hate little people, Chris? I don't know. They're just so small. They freak. <laughs> <laughs> they freak you out, don't they? <laughs> No, it's just like you know, you do, you never see them coming. They you, 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 you <laughs> turn to, you know turn the corner and boom, you just trip over one. They're like, what the fuck? I used to have a, a theory that uh, midgets were trying to take over the world, and that at so, somewhere deep under the ground in the resource res- re- recesses of the earth, there were there were midgets like planning, planning and plotting to take over the world. 
and they were spying on us all the time. They were because they were they were small, so they could get into our our, our vents, our, our heating vents, and spy on us and take notes. So, how much weed had you smoked at this point? I had it. I just these are things oh. my brain my brain thinks about. <laughs> And I think there's like little little midget special ops in every house, like you know, taking notes and, and looking at us and trying to find our weaknesses, and then stealing things, stealing supplies for their little midget army. Like you know, like you know when when you lose a you lose a sock. Do you, you lose are we going to underwear underpants gnomes? Is no, no. You, hey, sometimes you lose one sock in the yeah. in the, in the yeah. wash. Well, they steal the socks and they cut off the toes, and that's a beanie and one pant leg for their uniforms. <laughs> It's like they should have uh they should have games that are themed after midgets. Like we I want Spec Ops midgets. <laughs> Where it's like Splinter Cell but midgets. See, Can that you imagine would be... that? Like the little little guy hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that'd be good. The leaps and on they... a dude's face. And they're strong. Yeah, I mean they could leap yeah. on your face and they they wrap your their their legs and little little oh, dwarfy yeah. arms around your your face and smother you with their their, their dwarven bellies. The like base jockey hunters. from the Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, so Ain't small right for a so man good. to be ridden like that. <laughs> I think I think I used to think that the midgets they decided to take over the world because they tried to make a movie of the the uh, the, the Wizard of Oz and they they did that movie and then everyone laughed at them and they never they never forgave the world for laughing at them in their little lollipop league. There's a lo- lollipop guild. Lollipop guild. And then they made a league later. <laughs> <laughs> Lollipop you're, League of you're Legends. You're higher up on yes, the list. Exactly. <laughs> when I went to Radio Shack today to get some uh, some adapters for our audio setup here, uh, the main guy he said, "Oh, you're doing a podcast." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm you know doing a video game podcast and I'm trying to get this this upgraded and work better." And he's like, "Oh, do you?" And he immediately said, "Oh, do you play League of Legends?" I'm like, uh, "No, I don't. I don't play League of Legends." It's why like, oh, wait, wait, you play Dota. I'm like, no, I don't. So the closest to any Dota game I've ever gotten was World of Warcraft 3, and that's just because it has hero units, and that's about it. So It's so popular. It's it's completely popular. Yeah. It yeah. it blows my mind. And it's 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 probably because I just haven't played it. Maybe I'll play it and I'll be like, oh wow, this is this is actually quite good. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> the thing is I am I am so intimidated. Like my, my coworker fucking loves Dota 2. Mm-hmm. He has played probably at least 100 matches, if not more. And a match can at least last anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Oh, and I don't mean World of Warcraft 3, I just mean Warcraft 3, the RTS. World of Warcraft 3. <laughs> World of Warcraft 3. He's from the future. I'm from the future. <laughs> Actually, no, no. He's, he's a... I think he's... He might be 80 for 80. He's even on his wins, win, win losses. So it might be even closer to to 150 or 200, mm-hmm. 200 matches. But it's he, he plays it a lot. Uh, it's it's. This is your brother. No, this is my coworker. Oh, my, your coworker. My brother just plays MMOs. He, oh, okay. just, he gets sucked in. I think he's actually sucked into uh, Guild Wars 2 right now. Uh, but it, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of people in Guild Wars 2. But the uh, I just for for me getting into League of Legends or Dota. Uh, the learning curve is way too steep for mm-hmm. me to to play that game. I can understand that. My roommate plays Dota two at least three or four hours a day. Yeah, I mean, and you, it's it's there's so many intricacies to that game, and every single hero class is extremely different. In the mm-hmm. way you, play it. you have to relearn the game when you play a different hero class. And there's there were like. I think at this point there's like 80 characters now in Dota 2. 80, 80 hero classes? Are you talking? Are you serious? I thought I thought uh, League of Legends is the one that keeps adding a bunch of them. No, I'm pretty certain. I mean, I saw his character page the other day, and there was like, and it seemed like 80 or so characters. I gotta look this up real quick. Jeez. Well, yeah, you don't have to relearn the game, but you have to re- relearn the uh, the classes and the builds and how you do things in. in in order, like Runic is a big, uh, big fan of the MOBAs. Is that what it is? Is that the Dota's. genre? Is a Dota? Well, no, no, it's it's MOBA. Is the genre MOBA. right? Is that right? MOBA, MOBA, MOBA. Multiplayer According online. According to Giant Bomb, yeah. it's ninety-one. Ninety-one. 91? Yeah. Jeez, that's a lot of characters. That's a, that's crazy. That's yeah. 
And they all have their specific specific abilities and all that stuff. Yeah, there, there's different builds, there's different abilities. You can, <sighs> and then you have to know the strategies for them. And it's yeah, it's that's that's a lot of, it's crazy. Like I I could do it, but the thing is, like it would, it, I would never do anything else. <laughs> that's, that's what it, it would uh, boils down to. I just we don't want that to happen. No, you wouldn't have a new website. I would just I would be balding, fat, and alone playing right. Dota two or LOL. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you I re- could stream it. <laughs> Not that, stop. That's it. That's all you would do. Yeah. You would just be streaming it. Every once in a while, we'll just we'll just kick the feed to you and then take it over whenever we want to. Yeah, and I, I have just I, I have my all my hair is falling out. I'm just been fat, and I've got like a, a pony keg is just hoisted up next to me. It's constantly mm-hmm. feeding me beer. <laughs> I got I got a, a catheter keg? in. I like that pony kegs. Do you, do you no, not? No, I don't. I'm sorry. You never heard of the term? No. Really? A pony keg is just a small keg. It's only about maybe uh two uh three four liters or like a to the th- four gallons? Quad gallons to Google ca- calculator, one pony keg equals 29 liters. Is it that big? Uh, I was like, I've had... I didn't think the pony kegs were that big. I thought they were half kegs. Uh, it's a quarter, ke- quarter, quarter barrel. Keg. Yeah, there you go. Uh, contains approximately 7.75 US gallons. That's pretty big. Serves roughly 82 12 ounce cups. Yeah, I'm used to corny kegs or homebrew kegs, which are uh, five gallons. Jesus. Yeah, pony kegs. See, I'm not a big beer person, so the whole keg thing doesn't. I've got a, uh, I've got a mini. You know? I don't know what to call it. It's, it's a, it's a gallon and a half. It's like kind of like a big, um, plastic bottle. Uh, but it's you for homebrewing. You can fill your fill the bottle with the beer, uh, mm-hmm. prime it, cap it. And then just let it sit in the. Uh, it's a twist on cap. And you just right. let that sit sit for a while, it'll carbonate, and then there's a, a tap that goes on it, and it actually has little legs on it, so you can put it on sideways. And it's you mm-hmm. know it's a uh, probably like a 14 inch diameter or yeah 14 inch diameter, 14 to 16 inch. So it's, it'll fit right in your fridge. Mm-hmm. So you can set it on its side and just shove it in your fridge. And there's a tap on the front of it. And you can you put a little CO uh, CO2 charge in the in the the tap. So whenever you pull the uh, the tap, it'll CO2 will fill into the the keg, and then it'll push the beer out. So you can have like a mini keg system that's just in your fridge. Interesting. It's, it's fucking awesome. I got this well, uh, about a month ago, and I've been using it since then. Oh, so you, well, I mean, you already have you have yeah, this is this already. is where that this came from. I got oh, a little, okay. I got a mini keg in my fridge. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're already going to that trouble, why don't you just build a kegerator? Um, because it costs probably on the order of several hundred dollars, where this only cost me like. Fifty. Really? Yeah. Good God. Here I am sipping my. No, it didn't even call. It didn't even cost me that much. It cost me less than that because the, the bottles, <laughs> the plastic bottles themselves, are like eight bucks, and the CO two charges are like maybe fifty cents each, and the tap itself might be ten, fifteen bucks total. So it's pretty damn cheap. Jeez. Yeah, and then the, you just you keep reusing it. So you make beer, you put it in there. You make beer, you put it in there. I've gotten my beer down to probably about uh, between fifty and seventy cents a bottle. That's so it's, uh, that's pretty that's, cheap. That's, that's basically the same price that Chris is drinking right now it's, for his it's swill. Basically, but no, this this is way better. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying Chris Chris paid that for his swill. Yeah, but does the water make it? Huh? Bob makes it. I make and, it. Yeah, and Bob is mostly water, so technically true. Without water, Bob would be nothing. I would be a desiccated husk of a human being. He'd be a husk, like an undead rogue, like the guy in Darksiders 2. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, he is an undead <laughs> rogue. He looks like exactly like an undead rogue. He's a dual wielding undead rogue. Well, do- undead rogues in World of Warcraft do dual wield. Yes, true. These daggers. Those are their. They, what's it, what's, what was the spec? Uh, execution or assassination? Combat. Combat. He was, he was a combat rogue. Yes, Why do I fucking combat. know this? Because <laughs> you played, like me, you played many, way too, many, too much, <laughs> too many MMOs. I do miss. I'll tell you what. I, I do miss. Um, I do kind of miss uh, the uh, World of Warcraft arena matches. Those were really fun. Yeah. Like this, like territorial arena matches and stuff like that. You might like. Uh, I think Guild Wars Two has a bit of the, the arena matches too. So that was kind of a big thing about it. 
that's the thing. I have not. I, I've I've seen Guild Wars two a little bit. I, I I don't know much about it. Like, what is? Do either of you know what the main attraction is, or maybe maybe Chat does? Like, I played what, original Guild Wars. I don't know about two. No, but two is supposedly a completely new ball game. Like, what what is making Guild Wars two sort of be such a big thing? What's the allure of it? Do, does anyone know? Is it is it not uh, like turn based? combat with cooldowns is it more of an action-oriented combat system because it's I saw always little... been action-oriented yeah but i mean like in the, in the first one it was like you clicked your mouse you know what i mean like so Vunik is just saying at 4pp.tv guild wars is not the normal mmorpg i mean guild guild wars the original okay. first one was not a standard rpg either uh, right well, well, well actually it, it sounds ignorant Oh wow! So it's much more of a, it's much more ac- uh, action based than the original one was. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be more action oriented. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Well, forgive me if this sounds ignorant, but I've always thought the main allure of Guild Wars was the fact that it was a World of Warcraft experience without a subscription pre- uh, issue. Um, not really. The original Guild Wars was uh, what it was is uh, basically it had everything was instanced. Oh, I found the problem, guys. Hold on. All right, say something. All right, so so every everything yep, there in Guild, you go. everything in Guild Wars One was instance. So you had like the town you were in was instance. It had a limited number of people in this, this town instance. You could group up and you can go out into the outer world, which was instance, and it was mm-hmm. only only specific to your group. If you weren't in a group, it would just be it would just exclusively be yours. Mm-hmm. So there's no open world aspect of Guild Wars One. Like you never were in an area with just random people. It was you were always in a in a group. Right. Like they were always these sectioned off instance section, you know, like little areas that you could run through and do either you know quests in there or there'd be little like kind of a dungeons that you'd do. Uh, mm-hmm. Guild Wars Two. I don't really know too much about it. I'm, I'm assuming they they do a lot of a uh, uh, instancing as well. Same with the here's, Guild Wars One. Here's my question. Mm-hmm. Here's my question. Do I need to click the fucking mouse to move around, or can I just move around? You c- in the first one you could move around using the keyboard. No, you couldn't. The first one was a clip mouse click based. No, you could use the keyboard. No, you couldn't. I played it recently. Listen, I don't need no nip <laughs> from you. <so. laughs> you probably you probably clicked, but you can't. I I tried and I couldn't. I was I was like I have to click around. My mouse is fucking sucks. No, you, yeah, primarily you could. Now, I think maybe the first iteration of it was mostly click and move. But the first one, I believe, if it wasn't within the first uh, expansion, it was in the, at least in the next ones where you can move around with your uh, WASD. Well, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of it is like you could you could get through. I think there was only maybe 20 levels in the first Guild Wars. So you could go from 120 within just a day or two. Really? If you if you knew what you're doing, you could go through there really quickly. And the PvP was the attraction of Guild Wars. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like you would you would go into a guild and you would you would fight in the uh, arenas or different matches and you'd have different ranking rankings. You could actually go watch previous matches recorded through the Guild Wars client. So mm-hmm. you could watch guilds fight each other. Oh, that's Even, cool. You can watch it live and you can also watch it pre recorded as well. So it was much more like these kind of MOBAs. Uh, that are people are using these days, like Law, uh, League of Legends or uh, Dota, but it was very, very incredibly focused on uh, PvP and which right. uh, which classes you had and which builds you had and comp- composition of groups really dictated how well you would do in battle. Like okay. it wasn't super uh, focused on oh I need to grind and get this gear set or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. I mean it was relatively easy to get geared up and ready for PvP. It's just there was like a lot of, like, you need to buy all these expansions so you can actually get these classes and these abilities because these are what you need in order to be competitive. Right, right. Which is sort of the model they had because there's there's no subscription. So mm-hmm. they they really uh, just Im- had the importance of buying the expansions because that was the only way they'd make more money. Right. <laughs> well, then also, once you get into sort of the ML MLG stuff, I mean, then you have sponsors and backers and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, that's... I mean, there's a, there is a lot of money in that. I'm kind of surprised Guild Wars 2 didn't go to the free-to-play route because of the model they had. Guild Wars 2, it did. Isn't it free-to-play? No. Guild Wars 2 is not free-to-play? Yeah. Really? I don't think it was. No, it's not. Really? But, like, the uh, Guild Wars... Um, what they did is, like, basically for every new expansion, they made the previous games cheaper. 
We well, yeah, we know it's it doesn't have a subscription free, but you have to oh, that's purchase what I was, it. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's no subscription, but you have to purchase it. There's an up upfront price. Yeah. Just that's like the original Guild Wars. Well, that's fine. I mean, that's but you have to remember the old the old that's model. That's not free is, to play though. <sighs> yeah, but the old model was you pay sixty bucks and then you pay fifteen a month. And yeah, then you well, get one month free. That's like, the, that's, that's a, the standard model. I mean, Guild Wars is the only MMO that I know of that has this model where you pay once and that's it. Free to play means you never have to pay. Oh man, I don't know. I, I, it can't all be free, Bob. What are you, <laughs> what are you like? Ninety nine cent? Get a, take a shower, you hippie. Get a job. But it's it's like you uh, you socialist. Free to play games, you you buy or you don't even do anything. You just download them and play them, and then you can actually buy items in the in the shop, and you can buy items in the game, in the game to either increase your progression rate or oh, your improve your gear. No, like, no, you've already you've already shown your true nature. <laughs> I picture you're like you're like 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 little little what is that little bastard or little orphan Annie? No, little kid, little orphan. Um, it's it's a uh, can I have some more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, Fuck. Oliver, Oliver, you're Oliver. Like, Oliver. Yeah. you're like Oliver, but you're you're standing there with your laptop with your disc tray open. More, please. Can I have some more? Can I have some more? <laughs> more? That's Fuck Blizzard. Him. That's Activision going more. Fucking orphans. I know. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's. I wouldn't call them necessarily free to play games because it's not the same model as every other fucking free to play game out there. No, that's true. I mean, but see, there has to be a difference between like a free to play Facebook game. You know, where you're just kind of clicking around in your browser, and then a full like release title to Guild Wars 2. I mean, I think for a full release title of Guild Wars 2, you should be expected to have to at least pay some sort of entry fee to to, to sort of start up. Okay, and, well, like, what about like a uh, you know Tribes Ascension? Um, uh, there's that uh, RuneScape. Um, what Tribes, else? Tribes Ascension. Uh, EverQuest. EverQuest 2. Uh, Ever, Ever, no, EverQuest 2. You had to pay for. No, you don't. But you had to originally, but you it's free to play now. I know, but you had to pay sixty bucks to begin with. So now you can just download it for Quest Two, like just off the bat. Well, anyone can. It doesn't oh, matter no, if they paid it previously or not. Right. Like it's it's free right. to play. Completely free. To Completely play. free. There's, to there's play. no intro fee. Yeah. Oh, wait, so so Guild Wars is kind of free to play. How about that? Let's do, let's do that. It's free to continue to play. <laughs> free to free to continue <laughs> to play. <laughs> let's let's go there. Okay. That's that's free. Free to C to P. Does that work for us? Right. I like that. Free to C to P? Uh, free to C to P. <laughs> That's easy. It rolls right F- off the top. Free to play after I like purchase. That. Oh, but also, I mean, think about how games are nowadays. You know, like like Dark uh, Dark Souls or Demon Souls that have a multiplayer component to them, but there's there that initial investment. So aren't most games sort of like that now? Isn't technically Battlefield 3 a Feed to C to P. Feed to C to P. Feed to C to P. Feed to, feed, yeah, feed to C to P. Um, fetus, yes. Fetus alcohol well, syndrome. What? Fetal, fetal alcohol syndrome. Right. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, a lot of them follow that same model, which is why I think uh, Guild Wars was such a, a big attraction for a lot of people. Right. So it's, it's you know, that, you know, you buy the game once. It's a video game. You buy it, and then you can play online. Hey, it, it looks like every happy. other fucking video game you play. It makes people happy. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, like it's it's definitely the, the same model as we've we've had for generations. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's aside from like it, it's weird where it takes that MMO structure, but makes it that free to CTP model. Right. <laughs> and I think the only way they can do that is because of the instance, and they don't have to have massive servers. Yeah, I, and they've been. I mean. Guild Wars 2, they, they've. This has been in development for a very long time, and this they've been talking about this for a very long time. You know, I I remember yeah. reading the first uh, articles about when they announced Guild Wars 2, and there was a big article in PC Gamer. Uh, this is probably about six years ago, five or six years ago, um, and they had announced that they were stopping, they were ceasing uh, support of Guild Wars 1. And ceasing expansions because there was like going to be yeah. expansions uh, that were going to come out for Guild, Guild Wars One, and that was all canceled, and all of the resources were going toward Guild War Two. And there was like we're doing something new and different, and it's, it's going to be good. Believe me, it's going to be good. And that was six years ago. Now we're finally, you know, now it's finally released. So that's that's a pretty long development time, and they've been at every convention we've been at, pretty with some pretty huge booths. You know, I think we're 
uh, at least I'm silent on the feed. You shouldn't be silent on the feed. Oh, never mind. I'm actually really quiet. All right, I'm, I can actually hear myself. It's it's just incredibly quiet. Um, so yeah, it's a. Uh, it's interesting because they've been talking about this game for a long fucking time, and finally it's out. I've actually looked. I was watching Sci-Fi play a bit. My brother uh, got into the beta and was playing it for quite some time, and he's he's uh, going to be doing kind of like the um, he's going to be the canary in the mines for me. So he's going to go out there, play a little bit, see if it's fun, and then uh, come back, and then I'll probably end up picking it up sometime. All right. You got quiet because XSplit actually keeps lowering its volume by itself. You have. Your PC is possessed. I'm sorry, but you have a ghost. I, I, I look. It just went down. Yeah. See, possession. I'm by itself. What the fuck? Do you is, do do you in your household? I know I've been in your house before. You have a couple of crucifixes. Right. You need to place at least two on your PC, and it helps yeah. if you have some holy water to douse over the keep. There it goes again. See, it ghosts. <laughs> what are you doing, Xplit? The power Jesus. of Christ compels you. Christ. And I, again, why is it going down? Ghosts. I, this is ridiculous. Ghosts in the machine, Joseph. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Put a picture of, of Jesus Christ face down on your PC. He needs to look into the soul of your PC. I, me and my friend, we used to go to people's houses if they're religious houses, and we used to we used to go to their crucifixes, and we see. We used to say, you need to turn this frown upside down, and we turn the crucifixes upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would think you need to turn this frown upside down. <laughs> you, need to, you should take a picture of Jesus and tape him inside the case of your computer, just mm. staring at the motherboard. Staring at, yeah. yeah. That should do it. Jesus' bleeding heart. It's, so, now, now I, so now with everything else, I have to keep the mixer open to make sure the exploit's not on being an asshole. Well, you either put pictures of Jesus or gay pornography. Uh, how about the head of? I, I can cut out the head of Jesus and put it on gay pornography. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the picture of a? Uh, there is a a rule thirty four. It's it is a rule thirty four for literally Jesus fucking Christ. Uh huh. So it's Jesus fucking Christ. Like his himself. Yes. I've seen pictures of him masturbating with a hole in his hand. Like there was a, a cartoon. <laughs> Where did you see that? <laughs> it. Uh, it was a. Uh, I, I saw it on the internet, and he had like it was like it was a computer generated image. It was a cartoon, but it was like a computer generated image, and he had like his cock through the hole in his hand, and he was like that is jerking off like that. I, that's, that's a that's a new way to look at a hand job. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that's a, it's, a, it's a Jesus hand job. Jesus, Jesus Christ. You would call it a holy hand job. <laughs> God damn it! He's certainly nailing something to the cross. Oh, oh, you really nailed it! Oh, oh. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> oh man! All right, so I think this is a good time to take a break. Yeah. What do you think? I need All to right. get rebeard. Yeah, and I need uh, do my drink. So we'll be right back, guys. Uh, stay tuned. So there's music, but you guys can't hear. I can hear. See if, well, actually, I'm on the feed. This is Mighty Mofrin Power Rangers music. Mighty Mofrin Power Rangers? Mighty Mopin. Mighty Mopin Power Rangers. They Mighty, mope around. Mighty Mofrin Power Rangers. They're very sad. Oh, it stopped. For some reason. There we go. There we go. And it gets... God damn you, exploit. <laughs> Mighty Moping. They're very sad. They just... They mope around in their little tights. The music is is there to keep give it irony. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Carlos just texted me. What? I don't know. He, what? What in the world does Carlos want? That's booty call. Of course, oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so naturally, he texts you. Well, uh-huh. yeah, booty call. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's Carlos, what do you expect? Yeah. You know? uh, so here's here's what I so the past couple of uh, past couple of podcasts. Uh, a cocktail times. I said, hey, exactly. You know, get Carlos on. I haven't seen Carlos in a while. See what he's doing. And, uh, and uh, he's been he's been in Detroit apparently. Detroit. I thought he was in Denver. Oh, Denver. He's in Denver. He's like, he's <laughs> like oh, well, I'm in Denver, bro, and drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was a uh, 
he had an adventure in the Denver airport where he decided to get drunk before uh, getting on the plane. And he was bar hopping. He's bar hopping at the airport. <laughs> at the airport. Well, there's probably let's let's think about this. There's probably one. There's probably one uh, bar per terminal. So he's probably just going from terminal to terminal, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Different bars. Pr- probably there's there's not that you don't have to walk that far. You don't. You no. don't. It's like it's about maybe 50 feet. That's got to be the that has to be the worst bar hopping experience ever because it's it, it's like it's expensive and it's depressing and it's watered yeah. down. It's like yeah. horrible. Let's go yeah. to Ugh. every mo- the most horrible bars we can and get watered down drinks. I you know I I I, I get on planes quite a bit, probably more than most people do. Uh, not business people, but normal people. You know, cause conventions and and going places and stuff. Yeah. And you know I love drinking Bloody Marys when I travel. You know, on on airplanes and in the airports. For some reason, it just really works for me. And like airport Bloody Marys, it's always like really shitty. It's like the worst Bloody Berry mix you can possibly have. They throw like a week old piece of fucking uh, celery in there. You know? It's all limp. And it's all it's all limp and like brownish on the on the on the very edges of it. And it's fourteen and a half dollars. Oh fuck. Yeah. You know, last time I had a Bloody Mary in a fucking airport, it was something like fourteen dollars. That's like, really, that is stupid. Really? For this shitty, and I can get one of the best Bloody Marys in Washington State down here at a breakfast place called Lola's on Second Avenue in downtown Seattle. Um, when anyone comes for packs and has some money to spend, go down to Lola's on Second Avenue in Seattle for a great breakfast. But they have really good, some of the best Bloody Marys I've ever had for like you know ten bucks. I'll be there. Uh, you Thursday will be there. afternoon. You know we could get afternoon Bloody Marys downtown. I would. I would love to go get that. We we still have to go pick our media badges though. Do you, are you gonna go pick it up on uh, Thursday? Uh, I might as well. I'm. Uh, I, you right. have me on Thursday. Mm-hmm. So I think we. I think we should just get them and and, and get it done with, yeah. because everyone else is getting in. Fuck you late on different nights, and then there's gonna be a mad yeah. rush on like Friday morning and Saturday morning where people need to get their badges, and I don't want to be part of that. No. Oh God. I did that. I did a Saturday morning uh, badge rush, um, at uh, Pax East this year, and mm-hmm. God, I was I was sitting in the line. Uh, so. So I had gotten in uh, into the into Boston around probably must have been like four o'clock, four or five o'clock. Mm-hmm. And we rush down to the convention center. Uh, we get there at seven o'clock, mm-hmm. and we go in there. We're like, okay, God, we we can get our our badges. This is a, a Thursday uh, afternoon or evening, and they're like, well, no, you can't get your badges now. We, we're closed. We were open until like six o'clock. This is a, an hour later than we were supposed to be. Oh Jesus! Like, well, fuck! I, like, it's already like seven or eight o'clock then, and it's well, shit. So I'm gonna have to go uh, get up early in the morning. Uh, actually, we stayed with a comedian member. Um, who did you stay Steve. with? Super Steve. Super. I don't. Super who Steve. That? Who's Super Steve? Super Steve. Let Super me Steve. Uh, I, I don't think he's with the. I don't think he's in the community anymore. I think he's. Yes, he's, he's, left he's us. around. Um, he's a. He just. He just lurks. Super oh, Steve's around. The tall motherfucker. He. He is fucking oh, tall. Okay, so I, I this is the I guy know. that that cosplays as Slender Man during Pax East. Okay, yeah, I saw I saw pictures. I yeah, didn't, yeah. One standing like like two feet above Brad. That's Super Steve. I could probably like give him head like, standing straight up. Yes, he probably could. <laughs> <laughs> not, Wait, not that I would, and not that I want to. I'm just saying, <laughs> reference. I could probably do that. You know, being paid enough, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Money's always big, big enough donation to four player. A big podcast enough donation to four player podcast from Joseph to the, to the Cocktail Christ Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly cock in there, but uh, <laughs> so but I ended up uh, so Super Steve ended up um, staying at the hotel that's attached to the convention center. Okay. Which you know I was I was we were so grateful for he uh, he offered us you know um, David and I ended up staying with him mm-hmm. in his hotel. And uh, we got up early in that morning, about seven o'clock. Went over to the the convention center to go pick up our badges, and we were in the media line. And the media line for Friday morning fucking sucks. Oh yeah, yeah. It's really bad. It's really long. Like so, David and I managed to cut line, cut the line uh, without mm. even knowing it. Oh really? Because the end of the line is <clears throat> so there was a bunch of roped off area, but mm-hmm. we didn't know was that at the end of the roped off area there was actually a corridor like a gap, mm-hmm. right? 
that allow that were supposed to allow people to move through. And then the line started on beyond that and went further down the hallway. Oh, geez, yeah. So yeah. we didn't know the line went down the hallway. So we ended up just going straight like from the gap to the end of like the roped section. And we started talking to the guys in front of us like we knew them, but mm-hmm. we didn't. We, it was just like a basic, like, "Oh yeah, no, how you doing? We're no, no, we're working for this alley, blah, blah blah." But the people behind us thought we were with them, mm-hmm. so we just decided to play along with it. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. We didn't realize we cut a line until later when someone else tried to get in behind us and they're like, "No, no, no, the line's back that way." We're like, "Fuck, the line's back that way." And you don't, and you don't look, look back. Don't look back. We're just gonna pretend <laughs> like we belong here. Fuck this. You look and you see this line going all the way. Yeah, the yeah. It was the it setting, was the it setting went, sun. Oh, I fucking went back so far. And it still took us about 40 minutes to get our badge. Oh, Jesus. We got in Jeez. just as the mm-hmm. doors were opening at 9 o'clock. Oh, my God. And the craziest it's... thing is, like, ahead of us, probably about like maybe 20 people. Uh, you know how the line wraps around? Like, it's, yeah. like, on the other side of the rope. There's the these kids <laughs> that must have been 18. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they were working for their high school, uh, you know, what are they called? Uh, the video, audio, audio, video. Audio, video. Yeah, I know. What you're audio, audio yeah. production. Yeah, they like they they must have gotten a badge on that. Like they were so young looking. Oh, they had they had media badges from their yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah. We were, we were like we were looking at them like, are we in the light? Are we are we in the right line? Like, right. Because like Destructoid was right in front of us. So it's like and, you, yeah. Destructoid, and then these high school kids. And these from high school audio, kids were like, video, what, video like is this is this the AV club? Like, why are we? Are we in the Are we in the right? Do we need to be in the line that's on the other side? Like, what's what's going on? How does an AV club get media passes? I don't know. We 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 end up talking to a uh, another um a uh, guy that was from another AV, uh, high school AV club, mm-hmm. and it was just like, how? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> but yeah, we ended up uh we ended up meeting them again later. The AV club kids in the media room. Like we were, uh, we were sitting down in the meeting room, and uh, David had gotten our, our laptops down. We were like starting to work on our, our, our articles, and the AV because the um uh, at PAX, uh, usually at PAX in the in the media room for most people who don't know, there's actually uh, a bunch of at least on PAX East there was a bunch of dog carriers stacked mm-hmm. on top of each other. Do they have this at PAX Prime? Uh, I don't think so. So these were basically like lockers that you could use. Oh, yeah, they didn't have this at Pax Prime. Yeah, yeah. So these were dog carriers that they had rented. So there's some big-ass dog carriers, mm-hmm. like big, you know, mastiff-sized dog carriers. Right. And each one has a lock on there. And uh, the there's keys that are at the front desk when you walk into the media room. Mm-hmm. And you can go to the front desk and be like, hey, you know, I need to use a, I need to use a locker to lock up my shit. And mm-hmm. you can get your key, and it has a number on it. You go walk over to the, the, to the dog carrier that has the number on it, and you use the key to unlock it and shove all your shit in there. Uh, this is great if you have a lot of like uh, you know your business equipment. Like there was some of the big dog carriers actually had video equipment in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. And eventually, you know, when Dave and I are sitting down at these at the, these tables and we're you know starting to work on our articles, and these kids, I guess they had gotten a, a, a or they had they had rented a dog carrier beforehand, but they walk up to the dog carriers like, oh dude, look, look, dude, dude, and they start pointing at the dog carrier and they start laughing like, dude, dude, it's number sixty nine, <laughs> it's number sixty nine. <laughs> and both of us, like Dave and no. I, looked at each other and we're like, the fuck are they doing here? I think that's, seriously? that's I think that's why you don't find big big outlets. At in the media rooms of these things, they actually no, have their own well, offices somewhere. No, I, Destructoid was in this. Oh, they were there, really? Yeah, they were there. Because I know for like E3, they actually have their own like area. There were there were no offices. What actually we ended up doing to record most of our audible impressions, if you look back at the uh, Pax East audible impressions and you notice that they're kind of uh, echoey, mm-hmm. it's because we managed to sneak into a uh, a closed off panel hall. Oh, okay. Like there was an extra room that was open, mm-hmm. and we managed to get in there. And there was a bunch of tables around. Like nobody was fucking using it. It was never on the schedules for anything. We just managed to get in there. <laughs> well, we got in there, and uh, there's this guy crouched behind a table. <laughs> <laughs> He's half naked. Wait, wait, wait. This is in the. This is a Pax East. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're in this. Uh, paint a picture for me. You're so in we... this hall. You're in this this closed off, unused hall. Right. Wait, we were looking. We were looking for a place to record our album impressions. We're like, okay, right. where the fuck are we gonna do this? Like, we're, all right, there's some 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 side areas that have some tables there. They're relatively quiet. We keep walking down and we see this one room. We're like, you know what? This room is not marked for anything. 
is it open? It might be open. Let's go fucking try it. So we go over there and we push it open. And there's this guy, like he's standing up, pulling up his pants from behind his table. He's like, he's just just dressing himself. And we're like, uh, sorry, is this is this room in use? And the guy's like, uh, no, actually, no, I I don't think this is in use. Uh, because apparently, like he had he had been using that room for the last like two days. With his friends to like you know change in there and like leave their shit in there just oh randomly like someone else had found this room as well. <laughs> it was like this this communal secret that we had together that was a <laughs> hidden room in Pax East that we could use to record all of our podcasts and shit. We ended up recording like three hours of podcasts in there of the just different <laughs> audible impression segments, and it was so echoey. Like this this room was huge. It was it was for like one of those. Uh, like, you know how normally there's a large panel, there's actually two rooms, uh, but they're combined in one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just, like, one of those rooms, and they're oh, huge. They have power outlets, and, like, it was tables, like, all, everything was done perfectly. And it was just, like, this, this crazy-ass little section of Pax East that we found, just because we decided to poke our heads in a door that we probably shouldn't have. So were you, when you were uh, doing these audible impressions, were you amongst the refuse of these other people? Like, pens? Yeah, there was, there was some, there was definitely and... some bags, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, but apparently, oh man, this reminds me of the story of, uh, last PAX dev. So almost a year ago, it would have been about a year ago. This is the, the first PAX that the dev that they had and I was there and, uh, apparently, uh, someone, uh, an attendee at PAX dev had shit in the corner of one of their rooms. What? 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 <laughs> so they they found they the people that came in the enforcers came in and they were ready to shut right. down stuff and then cleaning stuff up and they noticed this pile of shit in one corner and like where the fuck did that come from and in the other corner there's another gentleman who's passed out with his pants halfway up <laughs> like the exertion of the shit. <laughs> It's taken so much out of him that he can only move about 30 feet before passing out. And that man's name is Carlos the Stout. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, we know have, what you did, Carlos. He 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 was Carlos was at Pax Prime last year, wasn't he? Yes, uh, he was actually. Yeah. Uh huh. See the 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 the, the pieces of the all, puzzle are starting to fit. It's all falling together. They are. So see, and, and, I, I you normally wouldn't expect. At something like PAX or PAX Dev, for someone to shit in the corner. At, <laughs> no, but an attendee. But, 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 but here's the thing, though. Like, I would expect it more at PAX Prime than I would at PAX Dev, because PAX Dev is supposed to be professionals. Well, yeah, and PAX Dev, yeah. you pay at least two to $300 to get in. Well, that's the thing. He couldn't afford a hotel with a bathroom after paying for the ticket price, so he had to shit in True. the corner. True. So, what is 10D? What is 10D? 10D? What? You said 10D. Attendee. Oh, attendee. Yeah. An attendee. An attendee. I thought we were talking about like a 10D or like a 20D or something like that. And then there was some... Joseph, you are such a fucking nerd. <laughs> there was uh, there was some there was some I thought there was some talk called 10D, which is like 10D gaming, you know, because no, uh, no, no. Warhammer uses like a, a 10 percentile system. So I thought maybe it was something about. He before. rolled for initiative and got a crit. That's why he could <laughs> shit in the corner. <laughs> if he had to shit in the corner, he couldn't. <laughs> he lost his saving throw. And... Exactly. The saving <laughs> throw. That's why he ended up in the other corner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You find yourself. See, I just, I just showed how much of a fucking nerd I am. What's so, a 10D? So while well, during the break, actually, uh, so this is this is kind of awesome. Uh, I don't know oh, that's nice. Let me see. I can't I can, I can actually see myself. It's just like floating slowly. Uh, so Tara actually got me this really nice little sake set. Oh, it's very nice. She yeah. does. She does. So you. This, this is this is great. So this is a. <clears throat> it's it's like a. Um, a lot of uh, Asian paintings, so uh-huh. it's actually ink drawn. Like so, it's uh, you got the ink draws. The, the there's one st- like you can see the strokes for the the ships on the uh, ocean. Oh yeah. Like it's it's all done in like a uh, just ink and and uh, painting like a a brush. So ink That's and, nice. It's, it's so all it, fucking awesome. It's handmade. It's gorgeous. It's no, no, it's not handmade. Sure. Like we got it from like Japan Town or something. So I ended up uh, picking up some some sake. Uh, sometime. Ooh, there we go. Oh, very nice. Can't see how full it is. It's clear. It's too dark. It looks bright from my side, but it's really it's dark. The water that makes it. It's the water. It's the water. The water. <laughs> have you finished? Have you finished one of those yet? No, I'm down about oh, here. Go finish it. Finish just come it. on, just chug it. Just do it. I'd... Yeah. Come on. If you finish it, I'll tell you about uh, some horrible, horrible stories we had in Japan. 
Oh, see, there you go. You can pass that up. If we if we miss out on stories, everyone's going to hate you, Chris. Yes. All good job for you. Okay, I, I'll do this for chat. Do it for chat. <laughs> chat, this is for you. <laughs> Just remember the water. It's the water that makes it. It's the water that makes it. It's the water. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord with me. <laughs> holy holy hand jobs of Calcutta. <laughs> 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 is it really that bad? I can't imagine yes! it being that. I can't imagine it being that bad. I can imagine it being more like just shitty. This is but not water. fifty cent beer. This is nickel oh, beer. Uh, you might you might have to. I'm sorry, but you might have to check a bag so you can bring some of this to Seattle. Yeah, I kind of wanna. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can find some in Seattle. No, you. I don't think you can. Big flats. Where the fuck are you gonna find in Seattle? I don't know. Uh, but. Big Flat established 1901. I I call horse shit because no beer this shitty can last over a hundred years. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh. It was made. It was made about a hundred years ago. That's it. Now that's the thing that that that's yeah. the actually the only they only made one six pack. <laughs> they one month, they made one batch and they're desperately trying to sell it. That's why yeah, it's, it's fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to get rid of it. Yeah, and they had Never more again. canning technology back in a hundred years ago. Right, right. Never again. Oh. So, Bob, Bob, you. So now you owe us a story. Yeah. So this, it's 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 um kind of. So it's the, the story is is uh in multiple parts. Um. There, I've been meaning to tell the story actually for quite some time. I'm surprised I haven't actually uh, had a chance to chance chance to tell it, but the. It's about the best time I've had had the or it's about the time I had the best sock in my life. Okay. Uh, and it's also still with me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so the 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 best sake I, sake I've had uh, was from a temple. Uh, when I was in, doing my doing my time in Japan, when mm. I was uh, I was studying abroad, um, there was a. Am I, am I really quiet? Is that is that what's going on? I I, fi- I fixed it. Exploit still like it'll just drop the volume for no reason. I'm oh, like, weird. I'll, I'll be watching the, uh, the volume. Fine. The volume now it's fine because I fixed it, but I'll be watching oh, the yeah. volume mixer and it'll just go for no reason. I'm like what? Oh shit! They linked a, a picture of Paxi, so you can actually see Super Steve. You don't. Right. I don't even need to tell you who's Super Super Steve in that picture. Yeah. It's oh yeah, easy. no, I, I've seen. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the so when I was out in Japan, um, uh, doing my study abroad. We, uh, the program I was with, decided to put us up in this really nice hotel um, out on the Noto Peninsula, which is a, so you know Japan's kind of a long-shaped, Noto Peninsula is on the western side, mm-hmm. that's uh, the, the area where the, the university was at, It's which was named Kanazawa for Golden Swamp. Okay. Uh, it was so fucking muggy and hot out there. Um, <clears throat> but the Noto Peninsula is uh, on the western, it's on the east the Sea of Japan side, so between China and Japan. And that's uh, well known for the hot springs. Okay. And this one hotel, this one uh, hot spring they put us up at, was really, like, it's well, very well known for being uh, a high-class hot spring. Mm-hmm. And on the way, we were driving with some friends of, of uh, the people um, that helped run the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, they decided to put them up in the hotel as well for being chaperones. Uh, there were, you know, some a couple in their 20s, like late 20s, and uh, they drove us up to this hotel. And on the way there, we decided, you know, fuck it. There's, there's this, you know, we're out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. We're driving around in the mountains of rural Japan, and there's this Buddhist monastery. Mm-hmm. And uh, we said, you know what? We're, we're about halfway there. Let's just, let's go there. Let's stop, and let's, uh, let's see what there, what's there. And we, we ended up stopping in this uh, Buddhist monastery, and the head monk. Apparently, also spoke English, mm-hmm. and we ended up just randomly running into the head monk and just like talking to him about you know the uh, various different philosophies in the United States and very political situations. This was back in uh, 2002, mm-hmm. so travel for Americans was still really kind of rough because of the whole like war and everything. Like, you, mm-hmm. and there was right. a, and they were like we were you know we're discussing a lot of politics and everything. And this this head monk uh, eventually was like you know you know. You, you, do you guys want some uh, want some of the sake? Like we we actually make sake here at this uh-huh. town, and we sell it to the local to the local producers, and uh, or like local distributors. And we're like, you know, sure, yeah, we'll definitely take some. And he actually he gave us each a bottle of this sake. Mm-hmm. Oh, he gave you just gave, he you, gave you a bottle. Us, he gave us a bottle. Monks like, are... I mean, like a monk monk made sake. Monks are great. Oh, it was I'll a Buddhist you. monk, and Buddhist this this was this was amazing. This was the best sake I've ever had. 
just hands down. Like I'm sure this bottle probably would have gone for eighty dollars each. Well, like they're they are where they were ridiculously good. I know. Like I'll have to go try to find the monastery and actually see how much they retail for. Like I'm pretty sure you can import this shit. Like this was this was like locally distributed mm-hmm. sake produced by these guys, like in these right. temples in the fucking mountains. Wow. So this was this was shit that I would never have again in my life. Yeah. Yeah, and this was this was amazing, and we ended up taking these three bottles of sake with us to this hot spring. And the thing about uh, Japanese hot springs is that they're they're open twenty four seven, so it oh, doesn't nice. matter what time of night it is, you can just go in and just sit in the hot spring. And uh, so we get there, we we drop off all of our shit, we go, we just soak in the hot spring, and then we come back out, and uh, we have some you know have some sake, have some beer, and then they, they serve us this great fucking dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, what happened uh, was that the uh, the one of the chaperones, her best friend, was the daughter of the man who owned the resort we were staying in. Okay. So she ended up. She, they got us tickets to everything. Oh, nice! Like they they got us tickets to these night shows. They got us tickets. You know, we we went and we had a karaoke so you, night. You basically had the hookup. Oh, we we had the hookup. Yeah. But the thing was, is that um, when we went to one of these night shows, uh, we brought. I think we brought one of the bottles of sake because open bottle uh, policy in Japan doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You just you. It doesn't fucking matter. You go to a, a supermarket, you buy a beer, you walk out into the street, you crack open the beer, and you start drinking. Nice. They don't give a shit. Right. Because they're the law. You know, they're the law is so strict out there, and people are so law abiding that there's no real crime. Right. Like there are some there are some parks where they don't want you drinking, but you can just just drink wherever the fuck you want. So we ended up bringing this this bottle of like a really primo sake to <laughs> this uh to this night show, mm-hmm. which was this kind of a. I don't really remember it too much because I was kind of drunk at the time, but I do remember <laughs> there being like a bunch of dancers, like women dancers, and it being kind of like a, uh, it wasn't like a burlesque show, but it was something uh, a little similar to that because they're very tasteful in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, while we're sitting there enjoying the show, drinking our sake, there's this uh, older guy, like probably in about his like late 50s, mm-hmm. that's sitting, you know, across the aisle from us, and he just keeps looking our way, and he's we're like, Okay, yeah, and eventually my friend that's sitting on the far far side, and he's like, hey, you know, he starts talking to him a little bit, and then he's like, well, do you want do you want some brasake? Mm-hmm. And he you know he refuses and refuses, he's like, ah, oh, no, 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 and um, uh, eventually like after the show finishes and we you know we're going out of the show, and this this guy that has been uh you know we walk out of the the uh the theater, and this mm-hmm. guy that had been sitting across the row was waiting for us outside of the theater, particularly right. my friend that had been talking to him. And, uh, you know, we're, we peel off to a group, you know, um, I was actually, uh, I was talking, I was sitting there with my friend talking to this old guy for a little while and the rest of the group is kind of, you know, waiting for us to be done and then walk away. Mm-hmm. And this old guy just kept talking to my, my friend and being, he, he, he kept saying like really weird things like, uh, he mentioned that he didn't like my big nose. Apparently that was something <laughs> and I was just like, what, the, what, the, why is this? And this is all in Japanese. Right, right, right. Uh, and my, my friend was all, you know, uh, uh, but this is, you know, this is, you know, well, well, I mean, like, yeah, but that's that's the differences in people. Uh, of course, this is all all in Japanese. So th- and, from what from what I know from playing Yakuza, is that you you were getting ready to have a, a big street brawl. Apparently, but yeah, uh, that's how you, that's what happens in Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah. Apparently. Well, actually, I'll tell you what happens. Mm. So I, eventually, I was like, you know, this guy's just this guy. This is a crazy old Japanese guy. Um, right. this is this is stupid. I'm just gonna walk away. Uh, but my friend there was talking to him for uh, maybe about another minute, and it's because the old guy, you know, after I left, the old guy was like, a, you know, uh, origa, origa, origa skebe, you know, which means like uh, I'm a I'm a pervert or I'm a I'm a I'm a lecher. He's like, uh, rape ga it's like uh, I like rape. He's, he's saying this about you or? No, 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 no. He's saying it about himself. Oh, I see, I see. He's right, like, right. Uh, origa, origa, you know, I like rape. Like literally, mm-hmm. he's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm perfect. I, I really like rape. And my friend's like, well, um, well, uh, rape ga, what do we do? Know? Is he's like, uh, but, but you know, rape's rape's bad. You know, like, was it really bad? And uh, eventually, you know, the, the old man's like, well, I, I like you. Uh, can I buy you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> to the, to the, to the friend. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, he propositioned my friend to be bought for the night. How, how by this old man that liked rape. Well, we never found out because my friend immediately went, ah, uh, 
no, 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 no. And the, you got to understand, in Japanese culture, the deeper you bow, the more sincere you are. This guy bowed the deepest I have ever seen a Japanese man bow to my really? friend saying, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and backed off. Mm. But apparently my friend gave off the vibes that he wanted to be a male prostitute for the night. <laughs> <laughs> And for the rest of the night, like we, we decided, like oh we'll we'll go down to the hot spring afterwards. Yay, we're all fucking completely trashed. Uh, for the rest of the night, I completely because my friend told me immediately afterward what happened. Uh, I would you know be sitting in the hot in the hot spring, and I'd look over to the door and go like, "Is that your friend?" And he'd look over there just like terrified, like uh, what the fuck? Uh, Don't fucking uh. joke about that. <laughs> you see, I, I almost think like. If you're in that situation, you at least want to know what he's offering. Like, I want to know what, I, what he. I want to know what he thinks I'm worth. Yeah. You know? Would I be insulted? Yeah. You know, well, would I be surpri- like, pleasantly surprised? It's like, oh well, that's, that's very you, nice, very kind of you, but you know. If you that, that, that's the that's you know you you ask him like well you know you could ask you know, like uh, how much like, uh, <laughs> yeah you, I would totally say, he might give you a number which is like you know I would probably say probably somewhere around several hundred dollars to a thousand. <laughs> Right, like but then that's, could, that's the amount this guy would be paying because he's he is a salary man. Oh, like, he's a salary guy. Yeah, yeah, he's an old salary man. So he's been in the uh, the company for a long time. And he's built up a bunch of money enough so that he's at propositioning young foreign males to have right. sex with them right. at these hot springs. So I'm assuming he, he's probably can pay top dollar for this. So do you think uh, are Japanese prone to haggle? Could you probably drive him up? Drive <laughs> you might, a you bit? probably could. I'm sure if he asked like you know how much, and he's like no no no, he probably would boost the price up a bit because at least if you say how much you have that's that's signaling that you have at least some interest in that (laughs) that's the danger in that but oh my interest would be just to know how much he'd offer i i I wouldn't go i just i'd want to know you know what he was what he was offering me you know i'm not interested in you me, but i let's talk numbers let's talk numbers yeah i'm not really gonna follow through but you know it's say i would joseph joseph you're such a tease you're such a cock tease (laughs) <laughs> You're breaking the old man's hearts of Japan. I would, I would break <laughs> every every old man's heart. Every Japan. old man heart. I'm going to go to Japan and break every old old <laughs> seller man's heart. <laughs> you should prying into their cocktails on their their eighty to eighty dollar socks. You just got to find the old men that are that that claim they are uh, perverts and they like to rape people. Oh and they, God! They offer them. Oh, never mind. I thought it was a. You were. You I was were lagging. Second. No, I'm I'm okay, I'm okay now. I wonder if that happens a lot in Japan. In Japan, I mean, because it's it's a fairly sexually well, repressed society. Kinda like the thing is like, all right. So it's <clears throat> the thing about uh, the culture is that um, it's weird. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain. So they have, uh, it goes way back. Um, they don't have a word for love. Mm-hmm. They have a well, they have a word for love <laughs> called it's I. But it more right. closely resembles infatuation. Oh, I see. Literally... That, that explains a lot about Japanese culture. <laughs> yes. So they do not have the Western so, civilization definition of love in their their words. They just they have actually call it. You know, they call it love. They call it love in in mm. Japan because they don't have a word for it. They have infatuation. They have I, and they'll try to use it in the same way. Uh, they actually use a uh, ski, which is like or daisuki. Mm-hmm. Saying you know, I I love uh, to to kind of convey the same meaning, mm-hmm. but you know traditionally they did not they did not have uh, that that oh. you know Western Westernized romanticized version of love. It's all right? but the, but infatuation they do, which which really kind of explains the whole idol thing. Yeah, Daisuke does does it <laughs> means really it. like Daisuke means big like literally. Mm-hmm. Right. Big Like, which is which is actually the the failed sister show of Big Love, which is on a <laughs> <laughs> Big Like that big fat bastard's all right. <laughs> yes. So it's it's uh it's interesting. It's very strange. So like they will there are there are high school girls who will be um sort of consorts to businessmen, mm-hmm. but they will they basically they're 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 uh, sugar daddies. Right. Uh, they don't necessarily love them. Oh no! But they may or may not have sex with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the same thing with geisha. Geishas, uh, geishas were not prostitutes in the traditional sense. It's more of an escort type of thing. They were an escort, right. but if they liked you enough, they would have sex with you. You right. did not pay them for sex. 
You pay them for companionship. Exactly. Yeah. If yeah. they liked you enough, they would have sex with you. That's, that's kind of how the escort thing works in like Vegas too. The high class escort thing. Yeah. yeah. Although in America, I think it's a little more. It's much more sexualized. But I think the base foundation of it is that you are paying for someone to come and spend the night, no, or spend the, the evening with you to sort of like if you're going to a business event and you want to, you know, impress your business buddies, you know. But it's not like because you can go to like there's like escort websites where you can just, you know. Yeah. Order an escort, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and then they say, you know, this is not this is not for sex. We just offer companionship. Right. Thing. So I think right. in Japan it's kind of the same thing. Well, also, like if you, uh, if you do have a prostitute, um, the culture is so weird that they believe in uh, it's it's so it's so different from ours. I shouldn't say it's weird. It's just it's uh, they have different ideals. Mm-hmm. So when you, uh, because they didn't mm-hmm. really have that kind of romanticized, um, uh. Uh, the you know European romanticized version of love. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I guess maybe it, I don't really know what what this is due to, but um, they won't. Prostitutes typically won't kiss you. That's that's a, that's an American dude. Did you see Pretty Woman? Woman? Oh yeah. That's well, she thing. kissed in a different way. So <laughs> this, this is the second show where I brought up Pretty Woman as a reference. What? Yeah. What the, I think I've only I've only seen really? half that movie. <laughs> Why I keep doing? Yeah. I think the last time you brought on, I was on here too. I need to watch more prostitute-based movies, so I have yes. better prostitute. Reference. You need a better prostitute movies. Uh, but the the whole thing, like with uh, with kissing, actually directly equ- uh, equ- equates to love. I see. So you don't kiss someone unless you love them, but you'll have sex with them because you have that you know that lust kind of thing. Right. But you won't actually kiss them because you don't love them. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's weird. It's it. Uh, I I still can't uh, even explain it. I've uh, I've studied that, Japanese for fucking eight years. But, I mean that that to me makes a lot of sense to where you know kissing is more of a personal type of thing. Yeah. Whereas you can sort of disassociate yourself from something like you know hard fucking, <laughs> right? Yeah. You just have no emotion at all, just more hatred in your face while you're doing it. Well, what? You, you know, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't always have to fuck her hard. Yeah, that's true. Some, Sometimes that's not the right thing to not do. The thing to do. <laughs> That being said, you've always been a rebel, Joseph. <laughs> I've always been a rebel. That is true. I'm, I'm a rebel, Dottie, a loner. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and I imagine this is one of your your Japanese stories. Oh man, yeah. Japan stories. We have yeah. How long yeah. were you there? Six or seven months. Okay. But it's it's yeah. a, it's a culture that works hard and plays hard. You mentioned that, like yeah. when you you talked about. The drunken salarymen stumbling home at night every night. That surprised me because I didn't think, for some reason, I thought uh, a Japanese would be more reserved than that. Well, but... okay, this is after two beers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the well. Yeah, they don't typically have the tolerance, but it's it's a yeah. If you drink a lot, you're going to build the tolerance regardless. So yeah. there are the the Japanese salarymen that buy the five liter. I was telling you about the five liter uh, bottles of whiskey. I wonder if I can find the pictures I had of that. I don't five know. Liter I don't, bottles of whiskey. Yeah, oh. I, I had a whole. Uh, I had a whole Twitter. Uh, not what's that? What's that goddamn picture site? Imger. Imger. No, or god Photo damn it! Bucket or you modern internet Flickr? people. Flickr. You, that's it. Flickr. Oh god, I don't want to use Flickr anymore. I know it's old. <laughs> Old, but apparently I hadn't I had one for a long time. Certainly. Oh, with your Japanese, with your your pictures from your Japan trip on it. Yes. That'd be that'd be cool. Gosh. Let me Let's see if it's signed in my. Uh... Oh, we're, while we're waiting, is it, just to go back real quick, Chris is 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 Dark Siders too? That you said that's that's on your radar, but you haven't played any yet. Yeah, it, it's right in the next room. I just haven't okay. gotten around to it. Yeah, I, I I highly recommend it. I think you'd really love it. I'm going to. I just, again, I haven't gotten around to it. I think I said, uh, I, I tweeted out, like, Darksiders 2 reminds me of why I love video games. You know, that's, that's, that, that, that oh, sense of adventure it. and wonder and discovery. Let's see. I found my pictures from Japan. I don't, oh, this is great. I don't, I don't even so there's a couple, uh, there's a gallery here. I can, I don't know, is this public or not? Uh, I don't know if we can pull them up. If you can throw it in chat, maybe you can throw it in chat. Maybe you can use the uh, the apps. So this is the uh, this is my favorite beer of Japan. This is a cover from it. It's called Malt's Beer. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find the. Uh... Oh shit! I actually got some pictures from the uh, the the onsen, the uh, hot spring we stayed at. Oh, so we can we actually see 
where the uh, uh, where the the initial. Oh, mm-hmm. I found that. I found the liquor. You should have gotten a picture of the old old salary man. Oh man, that would uh yeah. I didn't have my camera with me, otherwise I would have. Holy shit. I think I think Salary Man would be a stro- uh, uh, a more frightening villain than Slender Man at this point. Is it <laughs> is it the Umeshu? Wait, are these are these uh are this just all like God damn it. Is it So it's the Umeshu is the uh is the is it plum wine? Mm. Yeah, oh man, I fucking love Umeshu. Uh it's delicious. Tara describes it as fruit roll up the drink. <laughs> Ah. Yeah, uh, that that sort of intermingles my my childhood and my adulthood together. Uh, it's wonderful. It's fucking why. great. You can go buy this. Go to like Japan Town or something. You can go buy it. It's called Umeshu. Umeshu. Okay. Uh, well, there's yeah. a there's a Chinatown here in Seattle. I can go down to. There's maybe a... China, Chinatown. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Wrong China... culture. Wrong China... culture. Listen, Chinatown is is an umbrella term for all Asian people. And God damn it, Joseph. In, God, you know, but but then why is there Korean town and Japan town and we don't have no one has a Japan town, it's just Chinatown San and they Francisco all Francisco has there. a Japan town? Yeah. Just, you people just call it Chinatown, I'm sure. No, we call it Japan. We have a we have a Chinatown and we have a Japan town. They're different. You have both? Yes. We just have one. We have we so we have we have a Chinatown and it's just kind of everybody. But but be, people in Seattle, because they're so fucking PC, they have to call it the International District. <laughs> They refuse to call it Chinatown. It's the international district. God damn it! God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> You're so. Co- oh my god! I see. I see David and and Travis hitting each other with a uh, foam bats. It looks like. Oh, it's from Porkon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Porkon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so does anybody have anything else they want to? Did you see the, uh, uh, see the picture uh, of the the Jusco the the whisker whiskey? No, I, I, I'm, I'm screen regioned up here, man. I can't. Well, did uh, Chris get it? You found the Umeshu. Thanks, did you find the? Uh, it's bottles on a shelf. Yeah, it's the, it's the bright, it's red, red. Suntory whiskey. Yeah, it's red Suntory whiskey. It's four liters for three thousand four hundred eighty yen. That roughly that's, translates to thirty-four that's bucks. That's a damn good deal. Thirty-four bucks for four liters of whiskey. That's a lot. Yeah, and then it comes with like a shot of something else too. I don't know what that is, yeah. And uh, there's a uh, there are other pictures. You can actually see the uh, the onsen that uh, I had uh, stayed at. We actually we would uh, go up to the um, the roof of our our uh, our dormitory and do uh, barbecues. We actually we filled a uh, a floaty boat. Right now it was a, flo- it was a kid kiddie pool. Mm-hmm. We actually bought a kiddie pool and filled it up at the top of the roof. And so we on this like five story building, we filled up this kiddie pool and we'd have barbecues up there during <laughs> heat of summer. It was amazing. That sounds that does, that does sound wonderful. fucking amazing. It was, it was great. That sounds amazing. But it was also like you know ninety nine and like eighty percent humidity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bad. Oh man. So does anybody else have anything else they wanted to add before we close this down tonight? Uh, don't you think we should talk about uh Pax and what we? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Uh, so Pax is coming up this weekend. Um. Yeah, like four or five days away. Uh, we're all going to be there. Uh, it's going to be myself, uh, Bob, uh, Chris here, uh, Nick, and Brad, and we'll be covering the site of covering the site, covering the convention. Uh, we do have a, a home team uh, comprised of uh, Jeffrey and uh, Chris, uh, the other Chris, which I don't, you guys might know from the main podcast. He's had a couple of things on the site, but they're going to be helping us out with content. Uh, I believe we are now planning our group meetup, our community meetup uh, for Sunday. Uh, so if anyone's going to be in town for PAX Prime uh, this weekend in Seattle, uh, Sunday, possibly around 5 or 6, we will be getting a post-up this week for sure over yeah. on uh, fourplayerpodcast.com uh, where you guys can check that out and see the details. Uh, we're thinking about having it at uh, at, at GameWorks again. Uh, I need to contact them to make sure it's not being rented out by a big party. I know that IGN is actually renting out GameWorks on Friday night, but I think Sunday will be good. Um, so we can possibly do a uh, game works thing and they do have food and, uh, an op- uh, a full bar for those who are of age and, uh, as Good. many Sega games as you can play. So, uh, check out the main site for that. So that'll be coming up. Okay. So, awesome. oh, and, and then a week from today, we're going to be doing super cocktail time. Is, That's it, right. is it super cocktail time or is it mega cocktail time? Ultra cocktail time. I don't know. Actually, Uber, hold, Uber hold, cocktail hold, time? hold that thought for one second. I need to grab something. Oh God! Did he get something for it? Because I suggested him buying uh, several tins of uh, 
of tuna oil. Can can tuna and oil. What the fuck the would show. we use that for? Don't dirty Mexican hookers. Oh God, no! I'm this making everyone a... take one. This is the thing. Oh, See, all right, so first of all, Bob, you have to remember if we, if we do super cocktail time, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if we do it at a bar, you can't like bring your own alcohol for us. No, no, no. So you have to find something the bartender can make. Yes. Like it can be bad, but it has to be something that to make. make it. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, so you know that that might absolve us from you know have, having to take something with fucking tuna fish in it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can bring your own tuna. Tu- okay, tuna fish is not an alcoholic drink. You can bring it into a bar. We're not gonna be sitting in a bar opening cans of tuna and putting the water in our in our shots. Oil. <laughs> First of all, no one. I, if I was a bartender, I wouldn't stand for it. Second yeah. of all, I don't think anyone else would stand for it. And third of all, I'm looking for a way out. No, oh, come come the fuck. <laughs> I'm already. You know, shit, where did I, I lost him? I can't see. It's too dark in this room. Uh, I'm bringing something, a, a special... Oh, shit, here they are. I am going to bring these. Oh, if you can see God. that. They are, they are the coming to me, coming with me to, to Seattle. I don't do well with, like, gross-tasting things. Really? I don't... Well, like, I, I don't, guess, yeah, you like girly drinks. Yeah, I don't... Well, no, I don't... I do like girly drinks, and I like I like hard alcohol, but it's sort of like... I don't do well with the this might taste like vomit type of thing. I don't I don't find that enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> the thing is like the 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 out of all the shots, I've they're they taste bad, but I never feel like I'm gonna throw up from them. Well, yeah, no, that, I mean I can I can something like a hot Mexican hooker, I could actually I could do that before I do like the jelly bean that tastes like like cockroach. Centipede or centipede or whatever, yeah. any random bug. I can I can do I can do like the hot Mexican hooker before that. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I I would be fine with eating them. That's just me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're jelly beans. It's not like it, okay. If someone gave you a piece of centipede and gave you the jelly bean that tastes like centipede, I'd eat the jelly mm-hmm. bean. They're just yeah, jelly but, beans. But but that's a that's a devil's bargain, my friend. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's that's it's a just devil. a jelly bean. It's just got weird flavor in it. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's for one, it doesn't have the crunchy texture and the legs of a centipede. Right. It's right. not like you're trying to bite the head off of a cockroach. I've I've eaten ants before. So you it's would. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I but was, an ant is quick and you know relatively tolerable. Yeah. A centipede is a whole different story. I'm not into the whole eating bugs thing. I can't even do escargot. Well, the the problem with centipedes is that. If they're alive and you cut them into multiple pieces, all of the pieces will run away. All of them. Of a centipede? Of a centipede. What about a human centipede? Oh. Depends where you cut them. That's, that's true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. On that, I think I think we're done. Thanks for coming out uh, over here at 4PP.TV, Cocktail Time Live. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Chris, uh, for coming out. Thanks, everyone at home for uh, watching live. Uh, make sure you check out the main website, 4PlayerPodcast.com. Um and next week is PAX so keep that in mind and keep looking at the forums uh, for that community meetup on Sunday don't forget right. to subscribe and don't forget to subscribe subscribe, subscribe. to us it's, it's, it's a good thing it helps us out quite a bit so alright guys uh, and of course XSplit's doing it's thing because obviously I'm going to kill myself yeah. I swear <laughs> exactly. to it's, it's the worst thing in the world I don't know alright guys later Good night. Speed!